I said, yo, what's up, everybody? I'm Amber. This is Amber's Logic. Got a new video for you today. Milwaukee Bucks trades, rumors, and news. But before we get into it, y'all know the spiel. Comment, like, subscribe, and share this electrifying content with the people. I know it's been a few days, y'all. This is something I've been thinking about. I've been real busy doing family stuff, kid, all that fly stuff. But I'm planning on going live either today or tomorrow depending uh <laughs> how my kid is falling asleep today so i digress what i've just i've been thinking about the last few days is john horse right is he officially on the hot seat yet it's kind of what i want to discuss we he he's done some wonderful things he uh, acquired uh drew holiday that ended up getting us a championship he did get jay crowder but my question is, did he give up too much draft capital to acquire those players? And is there a limit on draft capital if it, le if it le leads you to a championship? So wh why do I say that? Because we gave up four first round draft picks for Drew Holiday, but acquiring Drew Holiday led to a championship. Understood. But could we have gotten Drew for maybe three three first and like a second or something like that? Was it necessary to give up four draft picks, four first round draft picks to get Drew Holiday? And as a fan, do you care if it led to a championship? Additionally, we gave up five second round picks to acquire Jay Crowder. I felt like that was overkill to get Jay Crowder, especially since we didn't play him to give up five second round draft picks for a 30 year old plus player. I felt was crazy. And now we're at the point now that we can't really acquire any new talent due to we don't have any draft capital. We're in the comment section now talking about trading 2029 first round draft picks to acquire talent. I feel like we won that championship, but we mortgaged our entire future to win that one championship. And I just wonder if those trades could have been structured in a different way where we wouldn't be at such a disadvantage in, as we are now to acquiring talent. And then uh, just to speak positively, of course, I think he did an excellent job in this year's draft with Cliff Livingston and Andre Jackson Jr. I do think they will come in and pay dividends immediately on this roster, especially after the loss of Wes Matthews. Shout out to Wes Matthews. We appreciate everything you've done in Milwaukee. Hard-nosed player, played in Marquette, and we, we wish you the, uh, the best uh, in Atlanta. But uh, we need to move forward with this youth movement. And I think with our lack of draft capital that we have no, we have no choice. So what I, what I want to talk to Bucks fans about is if the roster stays as it is and we don't make any type of blockbuster deal, is this roster – as it's currently constructed, good enough to win a championship. And be honest with yourselves when you're, you're determining this. I know the first thing the player people want to say is, oh, if we had Adrian Griffin instead of Budenholzer, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Possibly, but we don't know that. But possibly, yes, maybe we get out the first round, maybe the second round. But did, do we have the roster that's potent enough to win another championship? Why do I say that? We are missing creators. We we only have maybe three people on our roster that can create their own shot. Let's be real. That would be Drew, Chris, and Giannis. We, we and, and then Bobby P can create his own shot. We have no guard, no shooting guard on our roster that's capable of creating their own shot. They're all catch and shoot players, right? And then we don't really have a pack up point guard besides Wigington. So I feel that is a detriment on this team, along with not having any true backup mobile center. It's cool having Robin Lopez, Brooks' brother, but he's slow and he and, and plodding up and down the court. We need to be mobile and faster. These are just things I'm just thinking about out loud uh, of concerns that I have with the Bucks roster and how much of our draft capital that we've given up the last couple of years where it puts us where we can't really do too much. We have to be extremely creative with uh, if we can even get anybody else. So I, I guess the question is, y'all let me know in the comments section, is this roster good enough to win a championship 
or did we sacrifice it all for that one championship? And if so, are you okay with that? So that, that's what I want to talk about in the next live. Y'all let me know in the comment section. Please stay tuned for updates on when we go on live to discuss this. I just wanted to touch base with Bucks Nation and see what y'all think about Horse and where he is right now. Is he in the hot seat? Do you give him another year? Or do you want immediate changes now as far as on this roster or at least looking to make uh, some significant changes of getting Giannis a true number two? Because I've said it multiple times, as much as I like Middleton and Drew, they're both threes. They're not option two players. So y'all let me know in the comment section. That's what we're talking about next. I'm Amra. This is Amra's Logic. Milwaukee Bucks trades, rumors, and news. Where we're just, just giving you a brief touch base of what we'll be talking about in the next live. About John Horse. Is he on the hot seat? Has he done enough? Did he give up too much draft capital for us to win that one championship? Can we make additional moves to make this roster better? Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Comment, like, subscribe, and share the electrifying content with the people. Gone.